Hello everyone and welcome to the Online Career Development Speaker Series uh, hosted by the PC Office of Alumni Relations and the PC Office of Career Services. The series covers a range of career topics including career management, networking, social media, and leadership. For more information about our career webinars, visit www.tc.edu backslash alumni backslash career webinars. If you have any ideas for presenters, speaker topics, or your, uh, any other ideas, please feel free to send them our way to tcalumni at tc.edu. We do have a few other webinars coming up in March, uh, on March 14th, focusing on work workplace wellness and employee engagement, and also on April 14th, focusing on social media and emotional learning for children. Today's webinar, Seven Technologies That Are Changing Classroom Education, is presented by alumni Kaitsa Wasiu. She will share some practical and useful digital tools for teachers. Kaitsa is an international expert in adult learning, educational technology, and project management. She helps people to use digital learning tools to enhance performance and collaboration. Kaitsa has consulted for leading corporate training institutions, such as the American Management Association, and she has worked with several universities to enhance online learning and teaching. So with us today is Kaitsa Wasio. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for uh, being here. I wanted to start by thanking TC for this opportunity to participate in the TC webinar series. It's really an amazing experience to be part of the TC community which supported me with uh, successfully completing my master's and doctorate in 2009. And I, as you can see, I was right there for some time. My master's in 2001 and doctorate in 2009. And during that time, I had my first, um, my daughter. So TC is a very special place for me. And I am very excited to participate and to support educators around the world. In fact, my commitment this year is to foster and support over 1,000 teachers in accessing and using technology in ways that work for them and their students. So this webinar is a key part of that journey. So I thank you for participating. Now, this journey has really started, as I said before, from Teachers College, where I was challenged in the instructional design program to think about, well, what are the practical aspects of educational technology? And how can we learn effectively in the classroom? And so I went from the Master's in Instructional Technology and Media and went on to adult learning and leadership program where I was allowed to apply my interest in technology to how adults learn and how we share knowledge in the workplace. And in the end, it has now become about you know, creating productive and effective learning spaces for people. So at TC, I was encouraged to look at real life practical challenges, issues, and I was surrounded by people who participated with me and supported me in actually sourcing the solutions. So the whole point of this uh, talk really is that as you venture out to new adventures, it's truly these relationships that, and experiences that I had at Teachers College that have empowered me to deal with the uncertainty of building my business, building my career, and even just exploring what it'll take to have a thousand teachers comfortable with essential technology skills. So thank you very much for being here. So what this webinar is about, um, I'll tell you a little bit about how this presentation will go. I'll be following the presentation, um, and you know there are a couple of ways that you'll be participating as well. I'll be asking questions, so please feel free to write your questions in the chat session. Uh, and I'll also, when I ask questions, to respond in the chat session as well. Now, I know that some of you have experience with technology, some of you may not. Others may be in between. You might be just surviving technology. You might have mastery, right? Or you might just be like really using it powerfully to make a difference. However you are and wherever you are in terms of technology and your experiences with it and what you've experienced so far, I hope to expand your sense of what's possible with educational technology and possibly raise your curiosity to explore further. And I hope that you'll discover something new in this presentation and explore further with the links provided. And if you have any questions, you can you know, check me at uh, Twitter or on the website. Okay. 
So what's going on with teachers and technology? And what's happening with teachers and technology? Are teachers classroom ready? Right? So these are some questions that I see in my interactions with people in the past 15 years or so. When teachers are using technology, we're using software for word processing, making presentations, creating interactive lectures, using email, internet, and other tools for communication and collaboration. We're using software for managing student records, and yes, spreadsheets and graphics for managing or displaying information. Now, we can do all this with technology. That's if we have access to those tools, if we know how to use them, and if we're in a classroom that supports all this. So there's a lot to how teachers can be ready for the 21st century. And while we talk about teachers being ready for the classroom, right now there are just so many classrooms that we're dealing with. You know, when we talk about our teachers' classroom ready, are we talking about the traditional classroom where there's a chalkboard? Are we talking about the standard lecture classroom with a whiteboard projector, instructor's computer? Are we talking about a tech-ready classroom, maybe where there's a whiteboard, a projector, a smart board, or an instructor's computer, or student computers, and maybe even mobile devices. So being classroom ready and being able to use technology effectively clearly is limited and determined by what's available in the spaces where we work. Now, according to um, the National Center for Education Statistics, we are seeing that while the number of products in the classroom have increased, while the number of tools and technologies available has increased, what's really going on is there are not that many teachers using the tools. A lot of studies show that, you know, we may be able to have computers and various tools in our classrooms, or we may have computer labs nearby. Teachers are just finding all the tools available, all the products out there. The ed tech landscape is pretty extensive, apparently with over 1,400, 1,500 different products that are coming out, phasing out. And so teachers are just overwhelmed with what types of tools to study. And there are various studies that have, you know, looked at this and evaluated what is going on. And what's clear is that while we do have the tools and technology, just not many teachers are using them. Not many teachers are using them as expected, nor really getting the results that um, would really be ideal. And so before I go on, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, one question is, can a teacher be a good teacher without using technology? And so you may please go ahead and answer yes or no in the chat session. Okay, so usually in this case, most teachers say, you know, uh, can a teacher be a good teacher without using technology? It's like, no. I mean, there is the expectation that, yes, you know, they could be a great teacher without using technology, but there is the expectation to use technology. Do you have to use it all the time? Not all the time, right? And then I have a second question. Is a teacher who's not using technology is a teacher who's not using technology, computer, internet, etc., doing his or her job? In this case, usually there's a resounding no, right? If you're not using technology at all, there's just no way that you are really delivering on preparing students for the 21st century that we're in. So whereas in the first case, you know, there might be the perception that you could be a good teacher without using technology, in reality, not using any technology at all really has an impact, and, and a, an impact on the teacher's career, an impact on the student's learning, as well as an impact on the community at large. And so 
that's kind of a concern that we wanted to address and deal with because what's going on is that students are expecting customized, flexible, convenient, and really interactive, interactive uh, engagements. So just a moment here, I see a question. Okay. Okay, got it. Thank you for all the responses. I see the responses to to the questions and you know that as I said it's a debate. It's really a debate around what is perceived, right? So we understand and expect that, okay, we can be in a classroom and engage and interact with the students, and that's one of the richest experiences for me anyway. And so you don't have to use technology all the time. However, as I can see from the responses, clearly not using technology at all in this century, in this time, given the future our children are facing, is, would just jeopardize you know, the future we are creating and the success of, of the students. So thank you for all your responses. And part of what um, I was saying here is that students are expecting customized, flexible, and convenient really interactions that just come alive. So teachers are expected to present information where it's almost like a game or a show where kids are just engaged and fascinated. And, and while we can't do that all the time, there's already uh, tools and features available online, uh, lots of technologies available that can easily support teachers in creating these customized and flexible experiences. Now this is a young person, but college students are similarly expecting that. They want more interaction. They want classrooms to be, you know, the way their lives are. They're on their mobile systems. They're, you know, constantly using technology to do the things that they do. And then when they come to the classroom, they're expecting a certain level of interaction and engagement. You know, and this is a quote from one of the students that said, I would have liked to see more interaction somehow instead of just reading articles and posting discussions about it. I would like to, to learn more from a video podcast of a professor, for example. So students from all ranges are expecting engaging and interactive interactions. Okay, so given what students are expecting, well, what are teachers doing? Let's look at that for a moment. So teachers are preparing lessons teaching, creating syllabi, lesson plans, teaching, facilitating class activities, grading, providing feedback, performing class-related administrative tasks. I mean, this is what consumes a lot of our time. And I just want to hear a little bit from you, and I'll kind of make sure to check the system now that I'm used to it. Um, what, are, what are other things that you find take up more of your time? What are you doing as a teacher that, you know, takes up time for you? Yes, definitely in your um, list there in the chat session, just feel free to write any question, any idea or concept that comes to mind as you think about, you know, what you're doing as an educator or what you see educators doing, what do you see that is really taking a lot of time for them? Yes, that's right. Thank you. I see some responses here. You know, looking at what works best for the student, for the child, their well-being. You know, definitely planning lessons, yes, that takes a lot of time, needs to be constantly updated and, you know, checked. Yes, the process for what goes into planning, the metacognition, uh, preparing for standardized tests, and yes, test is a common element. So it's like preparing for the test, preparing the lesson, teaching, 
you know, making sure the students are all on the classroom level. So those are some of the things that I'm seeing uh, here, all contributed from, you know, Regina, Sarah, Beth, and Veronica and Charles. So thank you so much for adding to that. And so all, all of that is exactly what teachers are doing, all that you've, you've said. It's what takes up most of our time, right? And so when someone comes to you, or when in my early in my career someone came to me and said, well, here's a new tool you can learn. You know, I had to really think about how it would fit into what I was doing. How does it fit into, you know, achieving the classroom object, the learning objectives? How much time do I have? Does it, will it really make a difference? Or is this a tool that will fade out in a short time, right? So when we think about the ed tech landscape, given what we're all doing, we just look at it like this wild west, right? Like, oh my goodness, which tool am I going to start with? There's so many tools to explore, and it's like a growing market with over $20 billion um, in dollars, and it's just growing, a thousand companies, and it's just not possible to constantly be, you know, up to date with the key tools that you need to know. And or, you know, getting current trends or understanding features that you might find useful or matching what's available with what you actually have in your own classroom, right? So it just becomes really difficult to navigate this landscape. And most teachers just either give up or they stick to their few, you know, tools that they might use. And or if you just dive in and you know just keep learning and learning, but it takes a certain you know level of effort to do that. And what the ed tech landscape looks like is really this, right? So we're dealing with really a lot of tools and technologies for teachers, um, and it's just not possible given what we're doing to also just learn, you know, a whole wide range of tools. And so when I looked at this, I thought about, well, it's not possible to learn every tool. It's not possible, you know, to learn a tool for each of the things I'm doing. So what's one way around this to avoid, minim, you know, to avoid being overwhelmed? And so looking at all the pieces, having worked as an instructional designer, having worked as, you know, uh, I'm a course teacher, course developer, uh, college professor, having worked with students at all levels, what I'm seeing really is not just about the technology, it's not the device. What I'm committed to in empowering teachers is getting comfortable with how to use technology for certain purposes, like really getting that there are certain key aspects that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis and then getting a sense of the key tools in that in those areas, and um, and then just you know dealing with the uncertainty of what might change, what might come up, and but because you have a sense of how certain tools might be used, how they might fit into what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, I find that when people go through you know interactions with me or the programs I'm having, that they get more comfortable in understanding what's possible and and they become more effective. In, in, you know, in the tasks that they do. And how is that? So when I say how we use technology to teach, it's really looking at these elements. They are technologies for personal productivity that we as teachers just need to know. And I'm going to go over what they are. But I took that whole landscape of tools and technologies and just summed them up into seven essential technology skills. Why? Because this just sums up the practical things that we need to do, okay? And so there are tools for personal productivity that we want to master. Then there are tools for lesson planning and information literacy. And there are tools for communication and collaboration. Tools for creating and integrating multimedia and games. Okay, and tools for documenting our growth, blogs, and e-portfolios. Tools for classroom management. 
and tools for providing feedback and analyzing data. What I found over time in working with faculty, working with teachers and at all levels, is either we were being asked to focus on one or two or three of these areas, but there wasn't a framework, there wasn't a program that just said, look, these are the seven things you do, and here are the key ways of teaching with technology. And so when you learn generally, conceptually, how to increase your personal productivity and the tools available, when you can learn how to plan lessons and then to explore the tools available for doing that, it really makes a difference in how you relate to technology. I imagine that then it's about technology being a resource for you being effective, being productive, being effective as an educator because you're planning with technology, you're communicating and using technology to collaborate, you're able to create and integrate multimedia and games in your lessons, and you're also documenting and tracking your own growth and development, and then using technology to manage the classroom, which is something that's sometimes not covered as much when we talk about educational technology. And so, and then certainly using technology to provide feedback and analyzing data. So I'm just going to go over some of these briefly um, and, and see a little more about how it looks like. Uh, are, any, are there any questions so far before I go on? Okay. Okay, great. So let's look at the first area personal productivity. When we think about personal productivity, it's really thinking about the essential computer skills. Not all teachers may have a sense of the basics of computer skills, right? Or we, may, we know the things we know and then there are things we just haven't dived into. Um, and so personal productivity is really looking at the basic computer skills, understanding file and multimedia storage tools, and certainly using those tools to support your own productivity and ability to produce a range of tools. So what we're all familiar with is certainly what Office provides, Google Drive, Box, Dropbox, and iTunes, and just using you know, these tools to produce materials, to analyze data, to plan and organize, and certainly to create diagrams. We're all usually familiar with these, with these tools. And so I put this as personal productivity because this kind of is like the essence of what we're covering in, in producing the basic materials for the handouts, you know, the PowerPoints, um, the, the tests, all of that uh, is generally mastery of these, of the personal productivity tools has you be effective in producing all those materials. Then the second thing is um, lesson planning and information literacy. Uh, what we found was that teachers, you know, you would be planning a lesson and then kind of adding on technology as a side thought. And, and there is a way to actually plan with technology where it's teacher-centered, it's student-centered at various points, and so you're actually looking at various points of your lesson and, and identifying the appropriate curricular materials using online resources and, and just being really empowered around how to use what's available online. And there are just certain skills around that that, you know, sometimes are taken for granted, like we know how to find what we need online. <laughs> but uh, there are certain good practices that, you know, we cover and address. And so lesson planning and information literacy is really important for educators and certainly finding and using reliable learning tools. Uh, we don't have to create everything ourselves from scratch. There's just so much out there that can make a difference and support you with what you're teaching. So um, there are tools out there and available, and I'm going to um, show some of them to you shortly. Just one second. Mm -hmm. So for lesson planning, some of the things that I've seen myself is, for example, creating an audio syllabus, you know, a very interactive uh, syllabus that allow, a, you know, a short interactive syllabus that allows students to hear your voice, that has links to online resources. There are lots of online planning tools available. Uh, there are tools for advanced online searching. 
and certainly you know Apple iPad um, tools and resources are there and available and all kinds of apps just to make the whole process of planning really a lot more um, enjoyable you know like being able to find what you need and at the same time uh, having the experience be enjoyable so for lesson planning there there are all kinds of tools including how to create webcasts how to um, use different tools for English, math, science. There are just so many resources now online that it's, it's actually easier now to bring a lesson alive uh, by looking at what's available online and integrating it in your own uh, lessons. So we get to learn how to plan with existing resources, how to plan with what we need to create ourselves, and then certainly having those strong information literacy skills really makes a difference. So the third area is communication and collaboration. And here is the heart of it. This is where there are so many tools out there for teachers to just provide a very vivid experience of learning uh, beyond you know, the PowerPoints and just going into lessons that come alive from interactive in engagements with the students, whether it's a smart board or an interactive PowerPoint, whether it's tools in the learning management system, you know, like discussion forums, chats, wikis. There are just many ways to have, you know, communications and collaborations between students and the teacher, you know, among the teachers themselves, I'm sorry, among the students themselves, and of course with the students having interactions with the content. So there is technology that allows you to create a wide range of um, interactions just through what's available here. And clearly video is a key part of that. So there are many tools, Jing, Camtasia, PowerPoint, uh, mobile devices that now quickly allow you to uh, have a very vi vivid and video uh, demonstration of what you're teaching. In fact, now on some learning management systems, students can submit video assignments. They can submit video in, into Moodle, for example, and have that be graded, again, with, via video feedback and other tools. So communication and collaboration has completely moved from, you know, this lecture approach to um, uh, just a, a way of engaging and interacting with students that makes the lessons really compelling. And, and clearly to make the lessons compelling, to make these le uh, lessons interactive, teachers have to be comfortable with some of those tools. And some tools, additional tools are, you know, VoiceThread, Prezi, Animoto, Glockster. Um, so, you know, these are some typical ob objectives that you might create uh, when you're dealing with emerging technologies for communication and collaboration, for example. But there are many tools out there that can quickly, easily, you know, take your PowerPoint or take a set of pictures that you have and just turn them into a video uh, that can be used to welcome the students, it can be used to introduce a topic, it can be used to summarize a topic or just, you know, really have different students share and present the information that they have. In addition to these tools, clearly social media is a big factor using Twitter, um, Facebook, uh, using live polling, all those tools are allow you to engage students in, and bring them into the classroom. Other tools for communication and collaboration are the online conference tools, clearly like the one that we're using now. Skype and all of that really allows students to, to get you know, access to experts that might not be you know, in the classroom or invited in the classroom. So right now, I think it's really a fun time to teach. I'm finding that. And I just want to have teachers be just aware of all these different tools that are out there that are easy to follow that can actually make teaching fun and interactive for the teacher as well as the, the students. So the other thing is um, creating multimedia and games. We don't usually think about, well, how am I going to create a video or how am I going to create a game? But right now, as I mentioned earlier, you know, even with PowerPoint, it's quite straightforward to create video from your lecture notes. Um, lecture slides and to create narrated PowerPoints, 
but creating video has become so much easier. We have online tools, um, Pixlr, for example. We have smartphones that students can use, that you can use. And so multimedia can vary from text, from you know, the videos, the images, you know, having mind maps, having podcasts. And there are tools, online resources right now that allow teachers to create games and animations that just um, expand the concepts that you're teaching and creating. So there are resources for recording audio, resources for creating games online, creating animations, creating podcasts, screencasts, you know, flashcards, puzzles, Powtoon, QR codes, for example, and of course virtual reality games um, that allow teachers and students to interact in a, in a virtual space. So this area has, you know, grown up to expand extensively and um, there are many tools out there that, you know, when you think about, wow, well, how can I create multimedia and games? What's available? There are lots of different tools that you can explore that can do that for you. Okay, so let me see, did I miss a slide? Okay. So the next one is um, creating websites um, and e-portfolios to just showcase learning. You know, when we are going through our careers, it's off, not often that we're paying attention to documenting our growth and e-portfolios, and there are many tools that are useful for that. Um, everything from Google Sites to different features in learning management systems to um, just a range of tools that allow you to just document and interact and showcase what you've accomplished uh, with other teachers as well as, you know, to share what you're doing with, with your own students and to share your own journey in learning. And so what we have here is um, Pinterest is an example of a technology that is used, Facebook, um, vision boarding online, uh, blogging, all those are tools that are available to document and just showcase your work. Okay. And then for classroom management, this is a, an area that's fascinating because there's so much out there that's possible. Everything from a standard Excel file or, you know, a Google file that you can use to to manage the classroom. So there are tools out there that allow you to engage the classroom, social media, learning management systems, uh, digital tools for sensing and managing the class climate. So it, you don't have to be alone in sensing what's going on in the classroom. There are a wide range of uh, accessible tools for checking attendance, for managing communications, and certainly for providing uh, grading and feedback. And lately, mobile devices and online tools have really grown in, in their ease with which you can use them to get feedback, um, and including clickers and uh, other devices in the classroom. So that's about it. I don't know if you have any questions. Um, those are the seven essential technology skills that teachers need to have. And um, I will just go back to this slide so that we can Oops. so these are yep I'll go back here. okay I didn't want to click in the wrong place so we had a little detour there all right, so these are the seven essential technology skills. And again, my emphasis is that when we take the landscape and of, of what's available in educational technology um, and just kind of gel it down to, you know, what am I trying to do? What am I doing as an educator? What will make a big difference? Um, and so I've created this framework so that we can look at that landscape and put all those tools and technologies that come up into whether it helps you be productive, it helps you plan your lesson, it helps you communicate and collaborate, it helps you really bring multimedia and games to what you're doing, and or it helps you blog and you know create an e-portfolio, it helps you manage the classroom and or provide feedback um, and, and do your grading more efficiently. 
And so that's kind of what I wanted to leave you with, just so that you have a sense of what's, what's possible with technology. The tools themselves may change, but here's a way of teaching with technology. Here's how technology can help us to save time and have us actually be effective in the classroom in preparing students for the 21st century. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat session. Yes, absolutely. The PowerPoint will be available, um, so it'll definitely be available uh, for you to review. I'll be sending it to the TC Alumni Office. Again, thank you so much for uh, being in this webinar. It's quite a journey for all of us to explore these tools and technologies, and I'm happy to, uh, to have joined you on that for your, for your own journey. Thank you, and you're very, very welcome. Uh, there's a question here about, uh, can you talk about the role of professional development in teacher growth relative to technology learning? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, right now, in order to grow and develop ourselves as educators, as teachers, our learning of technology is essential. Our career growth and development is completely tied to our ability to use these tools. Superintendents are looking at that, districts are looking at that, and so teachers who are 21st century ready, who are able to use these tools within this framework, you don't even have to know exactly what's the most current tool, but just being able to demonstrate that I'm aware of the top two, three tools for managing a classroom, or the top two or three tools for communicating and collaborating. Um, I'm aware of tools available for lesson planning. A way of relating to technology is what I think will make a difference here in, in supporting teachers to develop themselves professionally. And so that, that's kind of one of the rationales for creating uh, this model. Thank you, Karen, for your question. I hope I've answered it. I don't know if there are any more questions. I see here we have someone from Brazil. Thank you, Katamari, for joining the webinar. Okay, so if anyone else has any questions, we'll give you another minute to just fill that in. Thank you, everybody. It's been a real pleasure to have this webinar with you. And thank you, Kaitsa, for sharing your expertise with the TC community. Um, thank you all for joining us today. The recording of the presentation will be available on our YouTube channel. And as Kaitsa mentioned, uh, the um, PowerPoints will also be available. So I'll share those with all the participants at the end. Um, we invite you to join us for the next webinar on March 14th on workplace wellness and employee engagement presented by alumna Deborah Ween. Uh, so thank you again all for joining us. And uh, thank you very much, Kaitsa. You're welcome. You're most welcome.